Hey everyone, I'm Paul, and I make poor choices when I fix my car. I bought this RAV4 three and a half years ago, and it was a turd. All the suspension components were rusted out, the shocks and struts were blown, and the springs were dead, and it bottomed out on every bump in the road. The head gasket was blown. It leaked oil from every seal. This car was not very good. One of the first repairs I did was a suspension restoration. I changed a lot of the suspension parts and I replaced the CV axles thinking, yeah, let's get some fresh parts in here, make it a little bit nicer. Well, now when I put the car in gear, it clunks really bad, especially in the back. And whenever I shift aggressively, it clunks too. And it didn't do that before. So what did I do to my car that made it clunk like that? Let's find out. The clunk is most noticeable when I drop the clutch. It looks like the differential mount is bad too. There's a ton of up and down movement. Today I'm focusing on the play in the driveline. That's a lot of movement too. I'm attaching vice grips to the differential yoke so I can watch its position. Okay, let's check it out. Notice we have the vice grips that's indicating the position of the drive shaft. If we turn both the same direction, forward or back, there's almost no play. That's testing for play between the ring gear and the pinion gear, so that's good. If we test opposite directions, there's a little bit of play. That means the spider gears in the differential have some play. But check this out. The CV axle, that shaft is not moving, and this part is, there's a lot of play in that inner CV joint. And on that side too, this is sitting still and that's moving. There's a lot of play inside that CV axle. These are not Toyota axles. I got these from AutoZone. Moving on to the right front axle, the inner CV joint has a little bit of play back and forth. It's not as bad as the back, but check this out. Look how much up and down play it has. I replaced the transfer case seal with a new seal from Toyota and it still leaks anyway. This axle is a cheap Chinese one from AutoZone. It's not a Toyota part. And I think the reason my transmission leaks is this axle doesn't fit right. And finally, the left front CV axle doesn't leak, no play. So I don't know, I guess you can get left front axles from AutoZone. All right, so I have my car in the air, wheels off. The front jack stands are on the lower control arm mounts and the rear is supported by my super heavy duty hitch. I'm going to make sure I can reach at least two of the CV axle flange nuts in the back and then turn on the parking brake. I'm using the small needle nose pliers to pull the cotter pin out of the axle. Use a 30 millimeter socket with an impact wrench to get the nut off, then use a punch with a sledgehammer to make sure the splines are loose from the hub. Now I can loosen the nuts that hold the CV axle onto the differential. Release the parking brake, then turn the axle 180 degrees so you can reach the other two nuts. Engage the parking brake again, then use the 14mm wrench to take the other two nuts off. Now the CV axle is ready to come out. Pull it straight out, off the bolts. As soon as I pulled this CV axle out, this cap just fell off of it, and here you can see the play inside of the inner CV joint. That's real good quality there, guys. That Chinese trash right there from AutoZone. Gross. I can just pull the axle out of the car now. Okay, now let's get the other axle out of the car. Here you can see the same really good quality there. Now the right side is a little bit longer than the left. And also you can see there's play in that one. What a piece of crap. Moving on to the front of the car, it's kind of the same stuff. Pull the cotter pin and remove the castle nut from the axle. Use a 30 millimeter socket to remove the axle nut, then make sure the splines are loose from the hub. Disconnect the lower ball joint from the control arm. Don't take the strut bolts out so you don't lose your alignment. Stick a long pry bar into the hole in the control arm and push it down to separate the ball joint from the control arm. Now there's enough room to get the axle out of the hub. Use a sledgehammer and a chisel to push the CV axle straight out of the transfer case. 
Okay, so I replaced this outer seal before with one from Toyota, so I doubt that's bad, but there's a little o-ring here on the CV axle, and I bet that's not sealing correctly. On the left side, I'm using the same technique to get the axle out of the transmission, but I'm using a long pry bar to reach it. Oh, let's catch that gear oil. And this is the good one. It didn't leak at all, and there's not much play. There's a little, but it's a lot less than the other axles. There is gear oil spilling out of the transmission, but not very fast. If you wanted to be lazy, you could swap your CV axles quickly and not have to drain and refill the transmission, although you should check the level to make sure you have enough. Let's compare these axles. The right rear CV axle is longer than the left rear. The AutoZone axle has many ridges on the outer CV boot. The Toyota axle has three ridges. The AutoZone axle has a smooth shaft in the middle. The Toyota shaft has three ridges. I bought these axles from AutoZone three years ago and put 8,000 miles on them. And the inner CV joint has a lot of play side to side and clunks when you drive. I bought these Toyota CV axles from the junkyard. They have about 200,000 miles and they're 24 years old and there's zero play in the inner CV joint. Taking a look at the Toyota axles, you can see the CV boots have some dry rot, but they're not torn yet. I will replace these. Let's compare the front CV axles. The right side has an O-ring on the part that goes into the transfer case and the left side has no o-ring, but has two steps instead. The AutoZone CV axle has many ridges on the outer CV boot, and the Toyota has three. The AutoZone shaft is smooth in the middle, and the Toyota shaft has some ridges. Also notice on the AutoZone CV axles, some of them have ridges for easy removal, and some do not. On the Toyota, they always include that part. The AutoZone axle didn't develop any play on the inner CV joint, but has a bit of play on the outer joint. The 24-year-old Toyota part has no play. However, the CV boot is starting to tear. Let's compare the left front, inner CV joint. I can feel a little bit of play in there. Outer CV joint, that feels good. And the old Toyota axle feels perfect. If you look closely at the seals, the AutoZone one has been flattened and has been leaking transmission fluid, and the Toyota seal is still good. All right, I'll start by rebuilding the rear CV axles. You know you have the right kit because the inner CV boots have a flat thing going across. Here I have a bunch of new bands. The inner CV boot gets a larger tube of grease than the outer CV boot. Make sure you have plenty of paper towels. That's a very dirty job. The boot kits are still available from Toyota. They're less expensive than buying low quality replacement axles, and it seems these Toyota axles don't actually wear out as long as the old boots haven't completely torn. If your old axles are loose, the grease came out, or dirt got in, find some better axles at the junkyard and rebuild those instead. I'm using small diagonal cutters and a screwdriver to open up the boot clamps. Make a little room, then cut them off with some bigger cutters. These clamps are pretty easy to remove. Just open them up, cut them, done. And of course there are two more on the outer CV boot. I forgot to do this, but Toyota recommends marking the outside of the CV joint as well as the inside so you can match the wear patterns between the tripod joint and the tulip. Grab the big part of the inner CV boot and pull it off the tulip. That's what the big outside piece is called. This one doesn't look like a tulip, but the front ones do. It just slides off. The next part is just wiping as much grease as you can with a lint-free paper towel. The inner CV joint has these wheels with roller bearings inside and a C-clip that holds them onto the shaft. Use snap ring pliers and a small screwdriver to get the C-clip off. Mark the axle and the bearing carrier so you can put it back on the same way. I'm paranoid about a marker wiping off, so I'm cutting my marks with a Dremel. With some small marks cut into it, I can now slide the bearings off the shaft. I want to get as much of the old grease out as I can. This grease has not been contaminated. It's not actually bad because these CV boots have not been torn and no water or dirt has gotten in here. I don't actually need to clean all the grease out. I just need to get most of it. 
I don't recommend using brake parts cleaner on this because once you contaminate the grease with solvent, then you've committed to cleaning 100% of it out. But if you don't add solvent to it and there's a little bit of old grease hanging out, no big deal. There's kind of a little hidden spot under here. You could reach it by taking the cap off, but then it could get loose or lose its seal, so I won't be doing that. You could also use a little compressed air, but make sure to cover it so you don't get a giant mess. The air moved the grease around a bit, so now I can wipe it out. This part is actually in really good condition. There are no scratches, and it just looks nice. I'm going to try to get as much grease out of these bearings as possible. A clip holds the wheels on, so we can't drop all these needle bearings. I'm going to use a little compressed air here. Again, don't use solvent. Just get most of the grease out and don't add anything that would contaminate the grease. And this piece looks very nice. There is no scuffing on the bearings. They look new. Moving on to the outer CV joint, start by pulling the big part of the boot back, then push the small part in to break the rubber loose from the shaft. A little grease will get between the boot and axle, and it will be easier to pull the boot off. This side doesn't come apart, so I'm going to do my best to wipe all the grease like this. Using compressed air is a great idea to help get the grease out, but it will make a giant mess if you're not careful. The outer CV joint has this crazy looking carrier and large ball bearings. It's called a constant velocity joint because there's always a bearing pushing on the outer part and it transmits torque smoothly and evenly. It's time to install the new outer CV boot. Let's get that close, grab the smaller tube of grease, and start packing this bearing. I'm using my fingers to force as much grease as possible into the bearings. I want to completely fill this part. The grease doesn't all fit into the cup, so the rest will go into the boot. I'm trying to get every last drop of grease out of this tube. The more grease, the better. Now let's close it up. Work the CV boot over the large end first it will snap into place. Then just push the smaller end until it snaps into place too. The inner CV joint has this triangle shape. Install it onto the shaft. Now the bearings go on and make sure to line up your marks. Installing the C-clip is the hardest part. I got one side started into the groove, then pulled the other side toward the groove with my small needle nose pliers. Give it a final push and make sure the clip turns in the groove. The bigger tube of grease is for the outer CV joint. Start by packing as much grease as possible into the needle bearings. Pull the wheels out, pack grease into the bearings, then push the wheels in and pack grease on the other side too. The rest of the tube of grease goes in this cup here. Now just set the shaft into the cup. Get the wheels into their grooves. You don't have to push it all the way in. Now I can push the boot down and make sure both ends snap into their grooves. The inner CV joint can move in and out to compensate for suspension movement. It's time to install the boot clamps. Comparing the smaller clamps, you can see the left side is slightly bigger than the right. The way these work, you bend them into a circle, and there's a little tab right there, and the outer piece catches into it, and then you close it. The larger clamps are different sizes too. The inner CV joint is slightly bigger than the outer CV joint. The big clamp doesn't come apart, so slide it over the axle. Then just close it. This takes a bit of force because there's some grease between the boot and the metal that needs to get pushed out. Squeeze the tabs together with small pliers, then tap them down with a small hammer. I'm giving the tabs another squeeze together. Then just make sure everything is tight with the hammer. Good! Next is the bigger small clamp. Latch the little piece, then close it. Squeeze the tabs together, then hammer them down. Squeeze the tabs again, hammer again. The outer CV joint gets the smaller boot clamps. Pull the rubber boot back to make more room for the hammer. I'm hammering around the band to make sure the latch sits flat with the rest of the clamp. Okay, it's time for the last clamp. These outer ones take more force to close because extra grease is getting pushed out from in between the rubber and metal. It goes pliers, hammer, pliers, hammer. Then I know for sure it's tight. 
That's it, these are done. I have all four clamps on here. This CV axle is ready. Just wipe up the extra grease. All right, now it's time to rebuild one of the front axles. We know this is the right side because there is an O-ring right here. You know this is a CV boot kit for the front because the inner boot has this curved piece instead of flat. The longer bands are the same length for both sides. On the inside, we have a longer band and a shorter band. This side's a little bit fatter. That's where the long one goes. There's an extra band here. You don't know why they give you that. This is the C-clip that holds the bearings. This is the O-ring that goes right here. And this is the clip that holds it into the transfer case. The bigger tube of grease goes on the inner CV joint and the smaller grease goes on the outer CV joint. The CV boot rebuild kit for the front is also available from Toyota Parts Deal or your local Toyota dealer. Make sure your Toyota axles don't have any play when you twist them. If your axles are loose, go get some better ones from the junkyard and rebuild those ones instead. All right, I'm just gonna fast forward through this part here. Removing the clamps from the front axles is exactly the same procedure as the rear axles. Pry open the tabs, cut the clamps off. I forgot to do this, but Toyota recommends marking the outside of the CV joint as well as the inside so you can match the wear patterns between the tripod joint and the tulip. Pull the boot off the inner CV joint first. This grease looks a bit different. It melted because the inner CV joint is always touching the transmission, so it gets almost as hot as the engine every time you drive. That's okay, this grease isn't bad, just a bit runny and gross. Use the snap ring pliers and a small flathead screwdriver to remove the C-clip. Mark a line going through the shaft and bearing carrier so you can put it back together the same way. Slide the bearings off, then the boot can come out too. I'm just going to throw that away. Use a lint-free paper towel to clean up as much of the grease as possible. This grease looks a little funny, but I'm still not using solvent here. These wheels are also in excellent condition. I don't see any scuffing or scratches. Use compressed air to get the grease out of the needle bearings and be careful not to make a mess. Now I'll get the old grease out of the tulip. See, this one actually looks like a tulip. It just smells more like poop and your mom doesn't want it. And let's inspect the inside. It looks good. Moving on to the outer CV joint, pry the big side of the boot off, then push the small side in. A little grease will get under the rubber and it will help you pull the boot off. The front outer CV joint is exactly the same as the rear outer CV joint. Wipe as much grease off as you can and carefully use compressed air to get the old grease out of it. Let's take a moment to appreciate just how good this CV joint is. Look at that. This thing is in excellent condition. And this is 24 years old. But there's no scuffing on those bearings. No noticeable wear. This is a really good part. Now take the smaller tube of grease and force as much grease as you can into the bearings. I want to completely fill the bearing cup and retainer, so I'm gonna push it down with my fingers and move the axle at different angles to get the grease in. Next, wipe a little bit of grease onto the outer boot to make installation easier. Squeeze the rest of the grease into the CV boot. I'm using the same technique as when I'm being cheap with my toothpaste. I want to get all of it out of that tube. Now just slide the boot over all the grease and snap the big side in place, then the small side. Next, push the inner CV boot onto the shaft. Line up the marks and push the bearings onto the shaft. Okay, the trick is get the C-clip started, then use the pliers to pull it into the channel. This is much harder than it looks in the video. The clip flew away the first couple times and I had to go find it. Once it's partway on, grab the clip closer to the middle and pull it into the channel again. With a little push and some luck, it will go in. If it turns, it's in the channel. Pack as much grease as possible into the needle bearings. I try to push the grease in on both sides of the wheels. Once that's done, squeeze the rest of the grease into the tulip. Get as much grease out of the tube as possible, then slowly push the tripod joint into the tulip. Push the big part of the boot over the inner CV joint tulip, then push the smaller side into position. The inner CV joint can move in and out to compensate for suspension travel. Now it's time to install the boot clamps. 
The big clamps are the same size on the front axles. Engage the tab and push the clamp closed. Close the locking tabs with needle nose pliers, then hammer them down flat. You've already seen this five times, so I'm just going to skip through putting the clamps on. The right front CB axle has an O-ring that seals the gear oil in the transfer case. A new O-ring is included with the boot kit, but you can buy it separately if you need. The metal clip that holds the axle into the transfer case is also included in the kit. Alright, now this front CB axle is ready to go back in the car. I don't like things getting rusty and stuck, so I'm adding grease to the splines of all the axles. Adding grease to the transmission side will prevent the seals from getting damaged during installation. To install the rear axles, slide the splined end into the hub first, then compress the inner CV joint by pushing it toward the outside of the car. It will barely slide past the studs on the differential. The inner CV axle flange is held on by four nuts and four lock washers. Engage the parking brake and spin the nuts on, but don't tighten them yet. Release the parking brake and turn the axle so you can reach the other two studs. Install the nuts and washers. Torque these nuts to 41 foot-pounds. Release the parking brake and turn the axle again to reach the other two nuts. Engage the brake. Now I can torque the other two. Install the axle nut. This electric impact driver is too weak to over tighten this nut. Torque the axle nut to 160 foot pounds. Install the axle nut cover and a cotter pin. This will prevent the nut from spinning off if it gets loose. Squeeze the cotter pin down to prevent rattling. Moving on to the front of the car, pull the spindle back to make some room and hold it back with your knee as you slide the CV axle into the transmission. Push the axle toward the engine and hold it as straight as possible. Give it a few gentle taps with a sledgehammer to push the locking clip into the transfer case. Insert the splined end into the hub. Insert a big pry bar into the hole in the control arm and push down. Turn the ball joint as needed to line up the bolts with the holes in the control arm. Install the two nuts and one bolt into the ball joint. The impact driver won't over tighten these, but the torque wrench will. The Toyota factory service manual says tighten these to 94 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, my AutoZone ball joints couldn't handle that much torque and the bolt kept spinning. That sucks. Every time I fix something, I create another problem. I guess I won't run out of videos, but I feel kind of dumb right now. Have a friend hold the brakes for you for the next step. My friends are inanimate objects. Install the front axle nuts and torque them to 160 foot-pounds. It's a good idea to grease the cotter pin so it doesn't get rusty later. So I dug myself a pretty big hole by making everything look good with crappy spray paint. The problem is, this paint chips too easily. If I even sneeze near my car, the paint falls off. Oh well, I guess I have to repaint the car every time I touch it. This Rust-Oleum paint sucks so bad. If you spray it on thick, it runs and leaves holes. Okay, the control arms look good, but while I'm in here, maybe I'll just spray paint these inner fender wells and clean them up a little. There's this textured rubberized coating on the inside that's supposed to protect it, I guess, but it actually causes rust. Check this out. Water gets trapped behind the rubberized coating and you get rust. Look at that. You leave that alone that'll continue rusting out your car that sucks the left side of the car was much worse i've already taken a wire wheel to it and it could use a little more work but i think i'm just going to spray over it because this is a can of worms i don't want to open just yet also when you install big tires on a rav4 they'll tend to rub right here but only on the right side i'm going to try to adjust this in a little bit I have high hopes for this Raptor Pro enamel paint. I've painted a couple small things with it, and this paint goes on smooth and doesn't seem fragile like that crappy Rust-Oleum. The can says spray one to two coats, three to five minutes apart, then let it dry for 60 minutes. It also says it's five times stronger than other paint. Fresh black fender wells go a long way to make your car look better. This paint dried extremely fast, as promised, and looks amazing. 
I masked off the struts because removing them would require paying for an alignment again. This paint has a very smooth and slippery finish. I think dirt won't stick to it. That's awesome. I got a little sidetracked with the paint, but there's one more thing I'd like to do in this video. The last time I changed my transmission fluid, I filled it with this Valvoline 75W90 gear oil. Now this bottle says it contains limited slip additive. Now I don't need that, and if I read the fine print on the back, it says it's recommended for high point differentials, conventional and limited slip, where API GL5 is specified, and non-synchronized manual transmissions, where API GL4 fluid is specified. Non-synchronized? What is that, a tractor or something? This transmission has synchronizers, and I have noticed that when I drive my RAV4 and if I shift really fast, it kind of just grinds and doesn't want to do it. So I feel like my synchronizers are not working as well as they should. So today I'll be taking this fluid out and instead filling my transmission with this Master Pro Full Synthetic 75W90 gear oil that is rated GL5. And if I read the back, it says it's GL5 for manual transmissions. You can put it in differentials if you want to, and there's no weird additives. So this should be a much better fluid for my transmission. Always remove the fill plug first. If you get the drain plugs out, but the fill plug is stuck, you're in trouble and you can't drive your car. You can use a 24 millimeter socket or a 15 16 inch wrench. They are the same size. That's some clean gear oil. Can you tell I don't drive this car? I bought some new drain plugs at my local Toyota dealership. If you don't want to buy new plugs, at least get the gaskets. The transfer case has a separate drain plug behind the engine. There will be another quart of oil that will drain out of it here. Install the new drain plug and make sure it's tight. Torque wrenches get me in trouble sometimes and I'm usually better off not using them. I can feel if it's tight enough. Make your life easier by placing the gear oil in a bath of hot water before you start. I bought this nice fill hose nozzle thing at AutoZone. It has a twist valve that opens and closes. Set the bottle on top of the transmission and stick the end of the hose into the fill hole. Squeeze the bottle of gear oil, then let it suck air back up through the hose. Then squeeze it again until all the oil is in the transmission. It's easier to deal with the smaller bottles, so I refill it from the gallon jug. When the oil starts pouring back out of the fill plug, the transmission is full. Wait for the stream to turn into a drip, then reinstall the fill plug. You'll feel the new washer crush down a bit before the bolt tightens up. The manual transmission shares its oil with the transfer case, so there is only one fill hole. If your RAV4 has an automatic transmission, you will have separate oil in the transfer case, and it needs to be filled through the dipstick tube accessible from the right side wheel well. Now I just need to reinstall the wheels and I'm done. I like to sit on the ground and use my feet to lift the tire into place. Always start the lug nuts by hand so you don't cross thread them. The electric impact is too weak to over tighten the lug nuts. Don't do this with an air impact wrench. Torque to 80 foot pounds and you're done. Okay, I'm ready to drive my car and see what happens. I just got back from a test drive and the RAV4 was so nice and so smooth. Now when I put it in reverse and drop the clutch, I can still get a soft thud from the rear differential mount because it does have a bit of movement, but it does not clunk. And I drove around a lot, did some aggressive fast starts, shifted aggressively, and the car never did clunk. And I did rip through the gears as fast as I could. The transmission didn't grind, it just shifted smoothly. One time I revved it up, dropped the clutch, and even broke the tires loose, and it didn't clunk then either. How about that? So. What did we learn today? Well, number one, I love AutoZone, but anytime you buy parts from the discount auto parts store, you're gambling with the quality of your car. And last time, I lost really bad. Number two, the junkyard is your friend. Not only are the parts cheaper, sometimes they're a lot better. And number three, reading is very important. When you're shopping for gear oil for your transmission, make sure it's 75W90, and GL5 for manual transmissions. Not for differentials, not for tractors. It's got to be that GL5. As always, thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next video.